In order for speciation to happen, there must be something that prevents populations from interbreeding, known as a reproductive barrier. If two groups are reproductively isolated from one another, they can accumulate more differences in their alleles and genes through repeated cycles of mutation and natural selection. Populations tend to become more different over time, especially as they specialize to their particular habitats. Geography can be a literal barrier to reproduction. In several freshwater lakes, groups of sticklebacks were physically cut off from the ocean population. This prevented the groups from interbreeding, and the freshwater populations gradually changed over time. In Arizona, two populations of ground squirrels were gradually cut off from one another as the Grand Canyon formed between them. Today, the two have different fur colors and they eat different foods. In the Hawaiian Islands, DNA analysis shows that the branching pattern of speciation in flightless crickets matches the order in which the islands formed. Behavior can be a barrier to reproduction. The greenish warbler lives in Asia, in a circular band along the edge of the Tibetan Plateau. These birds vary across their range, yet neighboring groups interbreed with one another. That is, except for at the very northern part of their range, where the two groups of birds are so different that they don't recognize one another by appearance, song, or mating behavior. Different types of fireflies have distinct blinking patterns. During the summer, it's not unusual to find multiple species in the same fields mating at the same time, but because each species has its own blinking pattern, mates can easily find one another and avoid fruitless relationships. If groups mate at different times, they're probably not going to interbreed. To reproduce, coral releases packets of egg and sperm into the water. The gametes float to the surface and merge to make offspring. In coral reefs, very closely related species live together, and their gametes are capable of fertilizing one another, but they rarely do. Coral time their gamete release according to the seasons and the light of the moon, and some miss one another by mere hours. Reproduction requires the right kinds of anatomy, in more ways than you may think. Two species of monkey flowers live in overlapping areas, but they rely on different pollinators. One species has features that are attractive to bees, and the other is more appealing to hummingbirds. If you put pollen from one species onto the other, they can make hybrid offspring, but in the wild, this happens rarely. Lush tropical forests are full of insects. Researchers have identified multiple pairs of beetle species that live in overlapping areas. The pairs look virtually identical to one another, but their reproductive organs are so different that they couldn't possibly mate. Genetic incompatibility, which can arise quickly or gradually over time, can keep groups from producing offspring together. The cotton species that is most commonly farmed has two complete genomes, with double the number of chromosomes of other cotton species. The parents are two distantly related species of wild plants that don't normally interbreed. But one time, about one to two million years ago, a glitch happened during gamete production, and the two plants produced an offspring. Because it had different numbers of chromosomes, the offspring couldn't breed with either of its parent species. But because it's a plant, it could self-pollinate. This type of instantaneous speciation is relatively common in plants. Sea urchins have proteins on the surface of their gametes that allow eggs and sperm to recognize one another and merge. In some closely related species, variations in these proteins make it impossible for gametes to connect.